Here we go on lesson 3.4. Today we're going to find slopes of lines and then we're going to learn how to use them. So I'm going to split this up into two videos again, kind of keep them short. And the first one is just about finding them and then kind of how they work. And then the second video is just going to be using them. So first thing you've got to know is you absolutely have to know your slope formula. Now, sometimes um, we say slope is rise over run. And that's something we can use, but that's not really the formula. Um, sometimes that might be more of a definition. Um, but you definitely need to know the formula itself. So here's your slope formula. We usually use the letter M for slope. So M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, we're going to do some examples of this later on. A couple things I want you to realize. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this really well or it says y2 minus y1, okay? It is not y squared, all right? You'll notice the two is not up above, okay? So it's the two's not up here, up in a power. It's not y squared. y2 minus y1, this means the second y value minus the first y value. The second x value minus the first x value. Y on our XY coordinate plane goes up and down. That's why sometimes we call that rise, because rise is an up-down movement. And then X2 minus X1 would be a left-right movement, and the run is the idea of moving left and right. Okay, So that's how that matches up here with rise and run. All right, so you need to make sure you memorize this formula. If you don't have this formula memorized, you're not going to be able to find slope. Okay. Now, there are four different answers or types of answers you might get for slope. Okay, four different types of slopes. So the first one is a positive slope. Okay, a positive slope is always going to be going up to the right. Okay, it's going to be a line that looks something like that. It could be something like that, still going up to the right. Or it can start to get really, really steep. But it's going, as we move to the right, we're moving up. So it's going this direction somehow. Okay, something like this. I use the pin here, so we can go like this or this. Anything along here is going to be a positive slope. Okay, a negative slope. Okay, in this case, instead of going up to the right, we'd be going down to the right. So something like that. Once again, it might be a little bit flatter. Okay, or it might be a little bit steeper. Okay, but any of those would be considered to have negative slopes. All right. Now the next two are a little bit different. We could have a zero slope. Okay. A zero slope, if you think about our, our rise over run idea again right up here, the only way that a fraction equals zero is if the numerator equals zero. Zero divided by any number at all except for zero. Zero divided by five or zero divided by negative three or zero divided by eight, any of those are going to give us an answer of zero. So in other words, we have no rise at all. The rise part is zero, but we do have a run. So a zero slope looks like that. It's a horizontal line. Okay, it might be somewhere else on the graph, but it's always completely horizontal. Okay. You may have heard of this little thing, hoi. Okay, if not, it's helpful to know the H stands for horizontal line. Okay, so horizontal. Alright. The the O here isn't really an O, it's a zero. Okay. Zero slope. Okay, and the Y, a couple ways you can think about this. Um, you could say that it goes through the Y axis. Okay, it goes through the Y axis. You notice, remember, this is our Y axis, so these lines are going through the Y axis. Another thing that's true about that is it's always Y equals a number. Okay, this is always a number here, so it might be something like y equals 3. Or maybe it's something more like y equals negative 4. Okay? But it's always a number that goes right here. Okay? Now I know with Twitter that's a hashtag and whatever else, but number. Okay? You know, a lot of times you use that for a number. Okay, so y equals a number. It's not the usual y equals mx plus b. It's just y equals 5. Or y equals negative 1. Okay, something like that. All right. The last possible slope is what we call undefined. Okay. Zero slopes are horizontal. Now, when we go back up here, the way we got a zero slope is we had zero divided by a number. 
to get undefined, you have a number divided by zero. Okay, a number divided by zero. So five divided by zero. We cannot do that. All right, it's what we call undefined in math. Or it could be negative seven divided by zero. Still un undefined. Okay. So if zero is in the denominator, the run is zero. That means there's no left right movement at all. So if we're not going to move left and right at all, but we are going to move up and down. Those lines look like this. Okay, they are vertical lines. Okay, this is another. This has another little kind of thing that you can use to help memorize this. And this one we can say vux. Okay, so we have hoi, horizontal, zero slope, goes through the y-axis, and it's always y equals a number. Vertical line, that's what the V stands for. It's a vertical line. Okay, and it can be vertical over here, it can be vertical over here. Okay, it can kind of be anywhere, but it's gonna go straight up and down. Okay, the U in vux stands for an undefined slope undefined. Sorry, I didn't write that very well. And then the x, couple things here again, it goes through the x-axis. Okay, it goes through the x-axis, and it's always x equals a number. Okay, it might be x equals 2, or x equals negative 7, or x equals 54 or x equals negative one or whatever. It can be x equals any number at all, but it's not in that y equals mx plus b form, okay? So those are your four different kinds of slopes you might run into. So you can have a positive slope, a negative slope, a zero slope, or an undefined slope. And you need to know what each of them means. So positive up to the right, negative down to the right, zero slope is horizontal, and undefined slope is vertical, all right? Okay, two other quick things, and we're done with this part of the lesson, the first video. There are two postulates you need to know. Postulate number 17 talks about the slopes of parallel lines, and postulate 18 talks about the slopes of perpendicular lines. So let's just focus on postulate number 17 for right now. All right. Slopes of parallel lines. All right. This is in your book. All right. It's not very difficult. But basically what it says, I'll, I'll read it to you in your book, and I'll, I'll change it just a little bit. But it says, in a coordinate plane. What does that mean? It means in an XY graphing plane. That's what a coordinate plane is. Two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. Okay, remember that phrase, if and only if, means it works both forward and backwards. So if they have the same slope, then they are parallel. If they are parallel, then they have the same slope. Basically what it says is this, parallel lines have equal slopes. Parallel lines have equal slopes. Now, we have one slight problem with that that only works for non vertical lines. Why does it only work for non-vertical lines? Well, remember what we just talked about with vertical lines. They had an undefined slope. And since you can't really define it, you can't say it's equal to anything else. So that's the first thing here, is parallel lines have un or have equal slopes. Now, the second thing that's going on is vertical lines are always parallel to other vertical lines. All right, vertical lines are parallel to other vertical lines. They do have the same slope, it's just undefined, okay, but we, we don't really say undefined equals something else, so we just add this little extra note in here that says vertical lines are parallel to other vertical lines. Remember vertical lines, the Vux idea, x equals 5 would be parallel to x equals negative 3. x equals 1 would be parallel to x equals 11. Anything that says x equals a number is going to be parallel to anything else that says x equals a number. Okay, this is two stars. We use it somewhat frequently. It's definitely going to show up on a quiz test, and you're probably going to end up using it in algebra class again next year. Okay, let's talk postulate 18, slopes of perpendicular lines. Now, the book says it one way. I usually say it a different way. All right, I don't really care which method you use. I think the way I do it's a little bit easier. That's why I do it that way. But basically, what's going on? is again in a coordinate plane, so in an xy graphing plane, perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. Now what in the world does that mean? Opposite reciprocals. 
Okay, now the book says this instead. It says that they're the product of the two slopes has to equal negative one. Well, that ends up meaning the exact same thing. I'll show you why it means the same thing. So let's say that one of the slopes is two thirds. Okay, opposite means that since this one is positive, the other one's going to have to be negative. So the new M or the other M would have to be a negative. Reciprocal, remember it says take your fraction, do what to it? This means flip it upside down. So the numerator becomes the denominator, the denominator becomes the numerator. Okay. If this is your slope and this is a different slope, then these are perpendicular lines. All right. Now the book says that the product of the slopes has to equal negative one. Well, let me show you why that means the same thing. Two thirds times negative three over two. A positive times a negative is a negative. You could reduce first or multiply first. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna multiply first. Two times three is six. 3 times 2 is 6, and that reduces to negative 1. So the product of their slopes is negative 1. Right? Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals, or if you look at the book, the product of their slopes equals negative 1. I think saying opposite reciprocals is a little bit easier to use, though, later on. Now, we have one slight problem with that. Since vertical lines don't have a slope, that doesn't help us with this. Right? This doesn't help us with vertical lines. We have a second thing here as well. Vertical lines are perpendicular to horizontal lines. Okay, Vertical lines are perpendicular to horizontal lines. So make sure you understand that as well. Anytime you have a vertical line and you have a horizontal line, they automatically have to be perpendicular to each other. All right, that's it for the first video. So make sure you know your slope formula. Okay, back to here, slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, the idea of rise over run. Make sure you understand the four different types of slopes, positives and negatives, and then zero and undefined, and this little Hoy and Vux thing can help you out a little bit if you understand this. It helps you so you don't get confused. And then make sure you understand the two postulates. Parallel lines have equal slopes, and perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. Watch the second video for some examples of how we're gonna be using this.